Hello world, today I find myself on the other side of Fukushima, the one that's as far away from the Pacific Ocean where a terrible earthquake and tsunami occurred in 2011 as it is from the Sea of Japan. This place is called Aizu Wakamatsu. Next to it you'll find Lake Inawashiro, where windsurfers like to play. And in the background, you'll see Mount Bandai. Yes, Bandai is also the name of Japan's number one toy company, but as far as I can tell, there's no relation. I did find this cool woodblock print of its eruption in 1888 though. So what goes on around Aizu Wakamatsu? Well, I already showed you the soba making in a previous video, but in this one I'm going to show you ryokans that look like they're out of a movie set, visit a samurai school, make some traditional lacquerware, get purified at a local shrine, and visit a former post town where daimyo and samurai stopped by on their travels in the Edo period. Let's first drop by the samurai school, because let's admit it, it sounds pretty cool. The Nishinkan is a restored high school that was originally built for the high class children of the Aizu samurai clan. This is where young boys learned the spirit of the samurai. But what does that mean in real terms? Rules, like the ones you encounter at the entrance of the school. Listen to the elders and do what they say. Bow to your elders. Do not lie. Do not act in cowardice. Don't be mean to people weaker than you. Don't eat outside. Or in other words, eat at the table. Don't talk to females outside. Do not do what you must not do. As you'd expect, samurai learned combat skills like how to shoot guns, yes, they shot guns, horseback riding, and archery. They're just fake arrows. They're really light. <laughs> the archery was all fun and games until one of our local guides requested the special glove you wear. That's huge. That's taller than me. Turns out he competed in archery as a youth, so let's just appreciate this for a moment. I didn't show where the arrow went because I was told it's more about form than the result. But hey, maybe that's what you say when the total noob, me, had terrible form, yet still strikes the target on his second attempt. Interesting tidbit, it said that this was the first ever swimming pool built in Japan. This is also where they train on how to ride horses through water. Unfortunately, no swimming is allowed nowadays. Despite what you may think, samurai also needed to be book smart. They studied calligraphy, meditation, astronomy, and geography, among other subjects. But the katanas all around them made sure you never forgot that they were training to be warriors. After visiting the samurai school, my wife and I's takeaway thought was, do they offer summer classes? Because I think our kids would benefit greatly from some samurai education. A place equally as spectacular as the samurai school was this ryokan, a traditional Japanese inn that looked like it's straight out of a movie scene. I felt like some martial arts action was going to go down as I listened to the shamisen player strumming along while the water flowed. And it's here where we ate our kaiseki ryori, our multi-course traditional Japanese dinner. As if the many courses of food weren't enough, there was to be a special dessert being made before our eyes. At first glance, I thought this mochi making was for show. You have all the guests sit around in nice yukata while the staff make a big production out of making it. Then the guests are invited to participate as well. Like the archery, it started out all fun and games. However, my mind quickly changed upon my first bite of the kinako mochi, which is roasted soybean powder on top of rice cake. It was still warm from the beating, and it was hands down the best I have ever eaten. They claim the region is great for mochi rice production, and after tasting it, I don't doubt it one bit. There was so much to do that we actually didn't spend too long in our rooms. One thing we made sure to enjoy was the onsen, our hot springs. This onsen is a private one, and it's massive. I guess it's if you have a large group that you all want to have a bath together with? I was just here all by my lonesome, although my wife was behind the camera filming my backside. This onsen is the regular public one. 
but because I woke up at 5 a.m. to film it, it was empty, and I could film it all to myself. Beyond this is actually a gorgeous view of the Russian River below, which you can see from my drone shot taken from dusk. The Aizu region is famous for many things, one of them being its lacquerware. At an exhibition we visited, we were able to see a plethora of designs available. There are also live demonstrations of the art in action. On the second floor, we got to paint the lacquerware ourselves. But to be honest, it was mostly us following a simple template. As much as I want to say I did this myself, it's really the master who came along and added his touches that made this piece special. I did it all by myself. <laughs> Did I mention that this area is known for using gold leaf? Yep, that's us pressing gold leaf into our lacquerware. Gold leaf is a big thing in the area, as witnessed by this golden highlight of the art exhibit. However, for me, the more impressive material used was this shell. The Shokunin transformed it into this spectacular design. To tone things down again, let me take you to Hanitsu Jinja. While I purified my hands like a regular visitor, it's the oharai, the purification ceremony that I did, that was special. Most visitors pray outside of the honden, the main hall, but I got to go inside to do the more involved purification ritual. The priest purified me with the harai gushi. And like any good ceremony, I left with a gift bag and my very own omamori, or good luck charm. As you do in Japan on promotional tours, we visited another traditional Japanese inn and onsen. What I really enjoyed at this place was the kazokuburo, or kashikiri buro, which means family bath or private bath. For those of you wondering, if you can have a dip in the hot springs privately, whether it's because you have tattoos, or you want to share a relaxing time with a loved one, this is how you would do it. This is again sen kake nagashi onsen, which means that it's pure hot spring water that goes directly into your tub, and when it flows out, it's flowing out right into the river beside it. Strip away the building, and it's about as close as to an in-the-wild hot spring that you'll get. One of the downsides to staying at Ryokans is that they stuff your face. I know this is a weird thing to complain about, but as I said in a previous video, I have a small stomach and I feel quite guilty about not being able to eat everything. At this Ryokan, it's half set meal, half buffet, which worked out quite well for me. Sure, they have to work on their naming a bit. Potato juice? And in the morning, it was taste rice. Despite the names, the food was wonderful. And to top it off, the view of the food was just as picturesque as the scenery through the window. I feel like some areas in Japan are good for a hikari, our day trip, but I have to say that Aizu Wakamatsu isn't one of them. Because I didn't even mention our visit to Tsurugajo, which they'll eagerly tell you is the only castle in Japan that has red tiles, nor did I show you Ochijuku, which was a former post town. It's been recently rebuilt to replicate the look and feel of the Edo period, which was centuries ago. And one small tip for you avid videographers and photographers. If you want to get the shot and get it right, make sure to dress like you belong. If you remember from my previous soba video about the area, I had a brief stint working in the soba fields. Well, I didn't have time to change, so on me I had my whole outfit complete with rubber boots, so I thought why not make use of them and film this little irrigation channel. I have no clue why I was shooting it, but the locals seemed to be quite curious. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.
I don't imagine you have any samurai towns where you're from, but perhaps you have something similar you can tell me about. 